What is the uh, what is the idea of a, uh, of a cutting plane method? The idea of the cutting plane method is suppose you have a, an optimization problem in which you have a feasible region that looks like this sort of a convex set. What it would do is it would try to approximate this convex feasible region using hyperplanes. It would try to approximate this convex feasible region using a hyperplanes and if and at each iteration try to improve the 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 description or the uh, uh, the description of these hyperplanes in 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 other words it will keep adding hyperplanes to uh, to this feasible region to the point where it, the approximation starts uh, getting uh, to the point where it starts looking almost like the like an uh, like the original constraint now the 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 beauty is because you are adding hyperplanes at each step, step what you would, what you can, what you are minimizing over at each step is not the not the original convex problem but convex region but rather just a polyhedron now if uh, so this sort of a problem is uh, is potentially much easier because you would know, you can use techniques that uh, for that are used that are available for linear programming in order to in order to address this particular problem now the the now you might you would obviously ask how would you use linear programming here because uh, your objective is not necessarily linear but then there is a very simple trick to actually convert any optimization problem to a problem where the objective is linear all right so let me first uh, tell you this so so suppose if i have an objective uh, an optimization problem like this where you are minimizing fx subject to x in s is is there a way by which I can convert this problem to a problem where the variable now is x? Is there a way by which I can convert this problem to a problem where the objective is linear? So the answer uh, the answer to this is yes. You can do this. You can introduce a new variable t and do a minimization over x as well as t, and add an additional constraint which says simply that f of x is less than equal to t in addition to x lying in s now you can, any of you can check that this 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 problem is a, these problems are actually equivalent minimizing this over t and x is the same as minimizing just simply fx over x right so what has happened as a result as a result your objective function which could have been any nonlinear objective function here has now become the objective has now become linear which is so this is one of the reasons why it's actually um, uh, somehow uh, you know in in uh, in optimization people tend to think that the ob difficulty in optimization is always to do with the objective whereas in reality the difficulty is all in the constraints you know or any kind of ob um, uh, complexity complication in the objective can always be pushed into the constraints so the geometry of the constraints is what makes the problem hard not so much the geometry of the objective so without loss of generality any objective any optimization problem can be written as an optimization of a linear function over some constraint and that's what we have done here so as a result of this what we can do is we can start off assuming that this this here is the star, is the form in which we have been given a problem we have been given a problem in which we are minimizing some linear function so we let's say you are minimizing some linear function c transpose x subject to convex constraints g i of x less than equal to zero. There are say m convex constraints i going from one to m. All right. Now the 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 cut the cutting plane method, which is what I'm talking about here. So let's call it, write that here cutting. plane method so what a cutting plane method would do is is this so in an abstract form what it, the general form is so it would given a polyhedron you at each iteration k you have a polyhedron pk so 
so you are you so it so we are going to assume that the object assume that you are minimizing c transpose x subject to x in s at okay at each iteration k this is your original problem at each iteration at each iteration k you have a polyhedron p k that outer approximates s we have a polyhedron p k that outer approximates s right now you what you do is instead of instead of solving the original problem you solve you do this you minimize c transpose x subject to x in now in p k now this here this here is a linear program this is now a linear program uh, all right so now if you if if x k belongs to s that means if it's feasible for the original problem uh, you can you, you one can stop because you have now found a solution of a lesser constraint problem that lie that is feasible also for your original problem so you can now st you you can stop and declare this as the solution all right but at the but if if xk is not feasible for the original problem then what do we do well if xk is not feasible for the original problem then you are in this situation where you have found say a point like this say suppose this is your original feasible region here and you have constructed an approximation of it uh, using these uh, using hyperplanes and got to pk and you have now found a, an optimal solution say at this corner point here and this is suppose your xk at this stage now what this this xk is not in the feasible region s but but the feasible region s is convex and xk is outside it then that what that tells us is that there must therefore exist a another hyperplane like this there must exist a separating hyperplane a hyperplane that separates xk from s right and what one can do then is that well add this hyperplane to your definition of pk okay so what so effectively what you, and that would then tighten the original hyperplane pk and generate for you a new uh, sorry the original polyhedron pk and generate for you a new polyhedron pk plus 1 right and then you are minimize then c c transpose x over pk plus 1 and then go on right so if xk is not in s what one does is find a separate find a hyperplane separating x k and s ok and then define p k say denoted by denoted by say denoted by say a transpose x less than equal a k transpose x less than equal to b k ok. So, suppose this is your hyperplane then you just simply define p k plus 1 as p k intersection x such that a transpose x a k transpose x k less than equal to b k. So, what is happened is the origin your original hyperplane the original set was this p k as as that, that has been outlined now the new the new set the new constraints would be this 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 and so on 
and with each iteration your outer polyhedron will become will continue to shrink and it will continue to better approximate the feasible region. And so, the advantage of this is that at every step you are only solving a linear program and if solving that linear program is cheap and is, is something that you can do easily, you can effectively solve a convex optimization problem using linear programming all right. So, now how do you why do we need this to be convex because we need the a guarantee that that a separating hyperplane exists. So, that is something that we, we, we have only in the case of a convex optimization problem. We, uh, we, uh, the other the other reason why this uh, uh, convex optimization works very neatly with this is because it all the generation of these new hyperplanes okay the gen defining these new hyperplanes becomes very easy when the problem is convex so for example in this in this particular problem that i wrote out here where you have where your constraints are gi of x less than or equal to 0 for i from 1 to m so if if your point is infeasible so, if, if if your x k uh, if x k is is greater than 0 sorry uh, so if if x k is infeasible which is effectively saying that g i of x k is greater than 0 ok. Then what one does is uh, what one can do is simply notice the following. So, uh, notice that so these are I assume that these are all convex ok. So, if x k is infeasible uh, that is g i of x k is greater than 0 and for let us suppose you choose the i which is most infeasible that means g i of x k is also greater than equal to g j of x k for all j for all j going from 1 to m ok all right. So, if uh, so if this is uh, this is the most infeasible one out of these right so then you can then in that case uh, the you the new cutting plane or the new new hyperplane separating hyperplane is defined as x such that gi of xk plus gradient of gi of xk transpose x minus xk is less than equal to 0 right now this is this is a hyperplane in x and it's defined use in terms of xk so this is linear in x uh, and xk is simply a parameter here now why is this a separating hyperplane Be the reason for that is well because if if i take any um, uh, if i take any point uh, if i take any point that's feasible so for any feasible point any feasible y, it must be that g i of y is is less than equal to 0 and from convexity it also has to be that this is greater than equal to g i of by convexity this has to also be greater than equal to g i of g i of x k plus gradient of g i of x k transpose y minus x k right. So, what does this mean that any feasible y will always satisfy this this particular thing that means the in 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 particular in particular this this equation here this here should be less than equal to 0 right whereas on the other uh, yeah. So, this particular thing would uh, 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 would always be less than equal to 0. So, what does this mean? So, this means that a all feasible the entire feasible uh, region of your problem ok the entire feas the entire feasible region of your problem must be contained in this particular half space this this half space that is written that is defined here right. 
So, when, so when you find a point x k, you just add this particular inequality constraint to your definition of your polyhedron p k and that gives you an additional half space in that contains ok, that defines for you this half space here that contains the original the original feasible region right. So, uh, so in short by this is what the summary is that if you have a convex optimization problem like this, the, this particular simp this simple tangent condition of, a co of, of convexity also gives us ways of generating uh, generating hyperplanes that would set uh, of the kind that we require right. Okay, so, with this I think I can uh, I, I will wind up this lecture and we will take up interior point methods in the next lecture.